Hello boys and girls, today uh, our video lesson is going to be a little different. You're going to be hearing my voice, but you are going to be seeing uh, on your screen what we're going to be learning and what I want to talk about today. So today I want to talk about answering questions in complete sentences. And that is what we're asking you to do when you're doing your reading and of course when you're doing your reading comprehension and of course when you do any kind of writing, we need to be good writers in answering complete sentences. That way we let our reader know what we're saying. Um, we know some things about sentences we've been learning all year and it has a subject and it has a predicate. We also know already that the subject includes the noun, who the sentence is about, what the sentence is about, and it includes uh, verbs. Uh, and that tells us what the noun is doing, the action. So in order for it to be a complete sentence, it has to have a noun and it has to have a verb. And it also has to be a complete thought. So when you write a sentence, we need to make sure that we have all of these things uh, so that it can be a complete sentence. Now there's different ways of writing sentences and I wanna talk a little bit about your language page. Um, on your language page 308, you're going to have some sentences to complete. And the directions are to make the incomplete thoughts into sentences by adding your own words. Well, I'm going to challenge you today. Um, I'm going to challenge you to explain it or give it a, a little bit more information than just making it very simple. So here we have uh, our first sentence is after I woke up this morning, I went for a walk. Okay, So that one gives us a lot of information. It tells us exactly what we did. The next one is I notice three large yellow birds. The next sentence is, then I heard a squeaky toy. I was so surprised to find the toy in its mouth. Now, if we look at these sentences, they are complete sentences, but it's missing some information and there's nothing wrong with these sentences, but we can add more words, more of our own words to give it more information or to give us a better picture in our heads of what's happening. After I woke up this morning, I went for a walk and we can add where or how we went for a walk. I went for a walk around the neighborhood. So I just made it a little bit longer and I just gave you more information. I told you where I went. I noticed three yellow birds. Well, I can give you some more information and tell you where they were. I noticed three yellow birds sitting on a tall tree. Then I heard a squeaky toy. Then I heard a squeaky toy coming from the birds. What birds? The birds in the tree. The three large birds. So if you'll notice just by adding a few more words to your sentences, we can give more details. After I woke up this morning, I went for a walk around the neighborhood. I noticed three large yellow birds sitting on a tall tree. Then I heard a squeaky toy coming from the birds in the tree. I was so surprised to find the toy in its mouth. Now I'm gonna make this a little bit more um, visual for you by giving you some more details. I was so surprised to find the, not just toy, we just said it was a squeaky toy. 
I was so surprised to find the squeaky toy in one of the yellow bird's mouth. So I just made my story a little bit more interesting than what I had started with. So you can just write one word to finish your sentence, but I'm going to challenge you to give us a little bit more of a story or a little bit more of a picture. Now, that's going to be just an example on your language, and there's going to be others as we um, do a little bit more seat work. But now I want to talk about writing uh, sentences um, in a complete thought and complete sentences, and I'm going to show you how you can do that. So here we have four sentences about myself, and uh, the questions are, where is Miss Soto? We all know that I'm in Michigan. What kind of food does Miss Soto like the most? Uh, in case you didn't know, I like all kinds of food, but if I had to pick one, it would be tacos. Why did Miss Soto go to Michigan? Uh, well, I came here to, to be with my granddaughter, right? Because I wanted to meet her. After it is safe to travel, which city will Miss Soto go to next? Well, of course, I plan to go back to El Paso. So now that we know the answers to all these questions, it's time to put them in a complete sentence. Now, if you'll notice, all of these sentences have um, a question word. And we want to make sure that we don't use the question word when we write our answers. So we want to use, though, the rest of the information. Well, a lot of times we're getting answers like, um, like this. Where is Miss Soto in Michigan? And the problem with that is, if you'll notice, um, it gives you the action in Michigan, but it doesn't, it's missing the, the noun, it's missing the subject. And then look at what happens if we were to erase the question. If we were to look just at the answer in Michigan and we find that the question is no longer there, then we don't understand what the answer is talking about. What about Michigan? So whenever you answer in a complete sentence, you want to make sure that you include information from your question sentence. Where is Ms. Soto? So instead of writing just the answer, simple answer, we need to look at our sentence and write some information. We have our subject, so we want to make sure we use the complete sub subject. Now you can write she is, right? But remember, whenever it gives you the name, we want to make sure we write the full name. Ms. Soto is in Michigan. Now we have a complete sentence. What kind of food does Ms. Soto like to eat like the most? And the answer, of course, is tacos. Well, that is not a complete sentence. We want to make sure that we answer using our subject and we want to say it's the food that she likes the most. Now, a lot of times we're getting students writing the whole sentence with the question. And they write, what kind, what kind of food Ms. Soto likes the most is tacos. Well, remember I said, when you write your answer, you do not want to include this question word. What kind of food Ms. Soto likes the most is tacos. We need to make sure that we don't use the question words. So we want to remove it. And we want to write the kind of food Ms. Soto likes the most is tacos. So make sure that you are not using question words. Another thing that we want to make sure we don't do is start with the word because. And I told you why I came to Michigan. Why did Miss Soto go to Michigan? Well, I wanted to meet my granddaughter. So a lot of students are starting their sentences with the word because. Because she wanted to meet her granddaughter. 
Now, that gives the answer, but if we again delete the question because she wanted to meet her granddaughter, what happened? What We're missing the rest of the information. Did she move because she wanted to meet her granddaughter? Did she go to another country because she wanted to meet her granddaughter? So we're missing uh, the information, which was why did Miss Soto go to Michigan? Question mark. And of course, that is our question. Now, I'm going to leave that there to show you how we're going to use part of your answer, of course, but we're missing some information from our question. We're missing um, our subject, Ms. Soto, and we're missing the information that it gave us here and about Michigan. So we want to start with our subject again. We could put she, but then again, if we remove the question, we won't know who, which she we're talking about. So we want to put Miss Soto. We made a mistake there. Miss Soto went to Michigan because that's what we use the word because she wanted to meet her granddaughter. Now we have a complete sentence. We have a complete thought and we are using the information from our question to write them. Next sentence. After it is safe to travel, which city will Ms. Soto go to next? Now, the answer I told you was El Paso. And that's fine, we have the answer, but it is not in a complete sentence. Remember, we need to use the information that we have. We need to know who and we need to know the answer as far as what the name of the city is. So the answer is Miss Soto will travel to El Paso. Now, this would be a complete sentence and we are missing uh, some information here. We're missing about the information about safe to travel.